the as the go saying goes, the um, picture tells a thousand words. So here in the first curve, uh, at the first expensive curve, the, 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 because because we are ordering lesser quantities, uh, our EOQ was five seven three. Okay, and the second U shaped curve, the EOQ is five seven six. The between three and six we cannot really tell it's shifted a little bit but there is a little bit of shift and the third tier curve third tier total cost curve is given by the third u-shaped curve uh, which is lowest which is cheapest and uh, the eoq is somewhere around here five, 579 uh, it's also a bit more to the right but we can't tell it's almost along the same line but it, there's a little bit of shift but the idea is this that you can see now when EOQ is feasible within the range all right uh, we experience this red solid segment here and the dotted segment means it is the kind of total cost curve that will not be experienced by us because to experience this curve we have to be uh, experiencing or buying at unit cost of $20 and still buying at large quantity so with discount uh, we will not be able to experience this segment Instead, we plot the second tier curve as if, right, as if the cost applies to everywhere, applies throughout the entire uh, range of order quantities, and then we demarcate them. That is, from 750 to 1999, that is the feasible segment of TC that we experience. True, right? And of course, the to the left and to the right, uh, they are not available to us. We won't experience those. TC curves. And again, we do the same for the third tier, right? This time round, uh, because EOQ is to the left, uh, the lowest quantity is here. So we have plotted these three segments, highlighting the parts that are feasible to us, that will be experienced by us when we make those quantities of purchases, okay? So that's the second step. And uh, third step, what we are trying to do here is that we're going to use or simulate the idea of a ruler Okay, so we have a horizontal ruler that we drop from the top. Okay, so this horizontal ruler, we're going to sort of keep sliding down. All right. uh, at first, it will cut the lowest point for the topmost curve. But can we go lower while still intersecting uh, any parts of the disjoint uh, uh, darkened lines, colored lines? Answer is sure, right? So we can slide further down and touch the lowest point on the green segment here. You see that? And that will give us a better, that is a lower total cost curve than the rate point here, even though the rate point is an EOQ, right? It's still higher. But can we do better? Answer is yes, we can shift down even further so that uh, our, our cost curve is going to be at... Um, the beginning of the feasible region for our orange curve now if i move this up uh, to be to make it clearer we can see that uh, it is not at the eoq because eoq is not experienceable by us we cannot be uh, uh, we, we are unable to experience the eoq lowest point tc for the second se sec uh, second tier discount instead the lowest TC that we can experience for second tier is going to be the starting point of the range, which we know very well because it's 750, right? And it turns out that after this analysis, you see that the second tier curve, uh, if we order at 750, we, you, operating with an environment of uh, capital S and capital H, actually will do better than if we order at 2,000 tires. Yeah, because uh, the conventional wisdom might be that the more we order, the the um, more savings we get. However, because of our operating environment, our S and our H, they are such that uh, when we order more, we are unable to be very cost efficient about it. So the best order quantity turns out to be 750 in our case. So that actually turns out to be the global best and therefore is our answer to how many to order every time. Yeah. So uh, therefore, uh, when we move back and look at the table, we see that um, 
our order quantity for the first tier should be the EOQ because EOQ is already probably the lowest uh, total cost for us. For the second tier, the lowest is 750, not the EOQ because we cannot do that. It's infeasible and we get one to one. And the third tier, the lowest is 2000. We know that partly also because our EOQ for the third tier is on the left. Now remember the U-shaped curve? When the EOQ is on the left, right, and it is also a turning point, so it will be the bottom of the U after which it will start turning up and never turn back down again. And so based on that logic, whenever EOQ is to the left of the feasible range, right, we always pick the minimum of the feasible range because that will always give us the lowest point. On the other hand, suppose, right, suppose for the first curve, Right, our example, suppose there's a curve such that um, the feasible point is to the right. Yeah. So in this case, we'll, we'll find that... Um, so in this case, we'll find that the feasible point here uh, uh, it's from 0 up to 749 and EOQ is to the right of our range which means that the maximum order quantity will be the best because it will be the left uh, dropping arm of the U-shaped curve so, so this will be basically our guiding uh, sort of uh, measurement in terms of the quantities, all right? So indeed, once we calculated the TC, it is clear which one to uh, to select. Now, in doing this comparison, it is important to add the purchase cost because number one, it is the purchase cost that is causing uh, all these differences uh, in, a, in a significant and a large way. So you have to add that in. Number two is, of course, the purchase cost, we, we started talking about that, the discount serves as a an incentive a funding for us to buy more so that we can hold the extras so without taking into account the purchase you will not find any meaningful difference right so it is important to add the purchase cost here so back to our tc formula you see that uh, these two terms they were the familiar annual setup cost annual holding cost but in addition we have c times d as a reminder this C is a function of Q, so it's not a constant anymore. And uh, we just basically use our little you know, trick here to, to overlay the cost curves in order to determine which is the global best order quantity. Right? So we have determined that. Okay. And of course, as an inventory policy, again, uh, we talk about how much to order and when to order. So the when to order part still is the same reorder point, uh, D times L, right? So we have then concluded this, uh, the discussion of this model. So as a quick summary, um, how many to order? That's based on the quantity as decided by the point that gives us the lowest global uh, best total cost, right? examining the feasible regions of each cost curve uh, indicated by or derived from the tiered discount tables. And the when to order part will follow the EOQ model where uh, we use the watermark, the reorder point watermark as an event trigger such that the first time our inventory level drops below the reorder point, it will trigger our reorder activity. Okay, so that concludes the discussion for this uh, EOQ discount model.